So my next project is going to be cleaning up and fixing up my new old drill press. This is something I got off Craigslist and it is a, let's see if I can get it to show up, a Delta 15665 or I should say a Delta Rockwell or Rockwell Delta, one of those type things. But yeah, it's a, one of the nice old school built back when they used real materials and most likely back when these things were still built in the US versus cheaper materials. It has the large industrial table, which I'm guessing since this is the groove and the holes, this used to be for like cooling fluid. And with the paint that was flaking off, I suspect that this came, and the color scheme, the blue and such, uh, I suspect this may have come from the naval base out here before they shut it down. But yeah, it's a six foot tall, granted that's taller because it's on an extra stand, uh, so it rolls around, but six foot tall, one horsepower motor, has a light, a Jacob's chuck, it's rusted, but it doesn't look like the base is cracked, it doesn't look like the table is cracked, it runs true when, you know, it's on, it has not had proper lubrication, so that's one of the things I'm going to fix. I'm not sure, this almost looks like one of those switches that would light up if it was on, but I didn't, I haven't tested that. But if they just put, this is obviously not the original, but they put a plastic uh, case on with a switch. And it has six pulleys and six inches of travel. And whenever they redid the paint, they screwed up the badge and there was originally supposed to be a sticker there showing the belt speeds combination thing, but that doesn't work, obviously, because it's not very readable. Um, but yeah, it has a one horsepower motor, and it needs quite a bit of cleanup and work. It comes with the, the larger chuck key, and the chuck key's not, it's not too chewed up. But I also, when I was trying to get a replacement key for my smaller Ryobi drill press, I bought this, and this is the wrong one for that, but it works for this. So effectively, I bought the wrong chuck key and then had to get a new drill press to go with the chuck key versus returning that. But yeah, that's crazy Joe logic for you. But yeah, I think it's awesome. This has 6 inches of travel versus my old Ryobi 12 inch that has 3.5 inch. This does not wobble when it drill bit is in there. My Ryobi wobbles. So I think what this once this is all cleaned up, it's going to be really awesome. And the motor that it has, it's a replacement motor, but it has a one horsepower. It's the same RPMs as the original motor, just more power. So that means that all of the gearing is still correct. But it has... The, the handle to adjust the table up and down, it locks in the back, and that's why there is the wrench. It's actually a, it's really interesting, it's a three-quarter inch actual drill press wrench, which is kind of neat, drop forged. But yeah, it's going to need lots of cleanup, new paint, lubrication, oiling, yeah, increase tension, oil, decrease tension. Yeah, so I gotta take it all apart and clean it all up, get it repainted, get it all lubed up, and then I should have an awesome works forever built like a tank drill press. And the one thing that I, I got, I have a base, I have one of these Bora bases, the PM. 1100 that you can put plywood on 
So since this is probably over 200 pounds of drill press, I'm going to cut that 3 quarter inch plywood in half, sandwich that together, and use this. And since this handle is not ideal and bent and all rusted up, I looked online and they actually sell replacement handle sets for these drill presses. So that's kind of cool. That was um, off of eBay. And that's really cool. So I'm hoping that that's going to work good. But yeah, that's the that's the next project is to try and get this thing all all tricked out, painted and working. And like I said, it already works. It just needs fully cleaned, de-rusted, painted and and it should be all good to go. So, yeah. That is the next project. Well, I managed to get this piece off and the front pulley off. Um, basically what I did was I loosened up all of these little short screw, little short bolts rather, that were holding that flat plate on. And then I loosened all of the motor bolts, which you probably can't see because it's dark, all of those, and was able to tilt the motor enough that the belt was loosened up and then I could take the belt off and then the front pulley came off and then the belt came off and then this moved. And the one thing with this bigger motor, this used to have a, originally had a smaller motor. This is supposed to be, if we can get light on it, that is supposed to be the belt tensioner. We can see that was clear into there, which means this was pulled the whole way back. So it was almost completely tensioned solid. And the one thing with that is that means you can't really change them. You can't really easily at all change the belt from one side to another. So that's going to be annoying. I was able to take out a set screw there. That one doesn't come out. Uh, I think it's rounded off in there. Not sure what to do about that. But at least I was able to get the top off. And then I realized, hey, wait a second. <laughs> I can't just take the motor off. There's wires. Well, if you look down in, Those are the wires that come in from the back. They go down to the light and then they come forward to the switch. But then I got took the switch out and looked and why well, yes, that is in fact one of the wires that's powered and connected to the switch completely fraying and frayed. So, as some of the other people have done online I think this is a four wire connector because for some reason this is this uses green and white and there's at least one or two other cords in there. I'm going to have to replace this whole cord and replace this and then once that's done I can undo the light switch and then I can take the motor off and then I can take this thing off. Yeah, it's going to be fun. But you can see up in, sort of. And yeah, it's dry and gunked up. And spider webs. That's always what you need to see. So, yeah. Gonna have to work on that too. But in the meantime, I know for certain I have to replace the wiring because that's frayed wires in a. No, not gonna work. So, yeah. But this comes up, down, and out. So, the way this works is this part. The pulley goes up and down on this outer shaft and is locked in with a. Uh, I don't know if I can get it around. Yes, I can. A locked in with a key to this outer shaft, which is a star drive or whatever, into the quill. And so the pulley drives this, this drives that, that drives this. So, yeah. Progress, but sad progress. Yeah, you can see the. That wire is not doing well. So I managed to get 
motor off, the pulleys sorted. I did manage to get the other set screw out. I had to tap the Allen key down into it gently with a hammer and that got that out. So now I have all those pieces off. Yeah. All the electrical's off. I got the the light off that was up under here and it's attached to this little spot. And this is an oiler port that just sticks in the side. Um, but I have and just can hear the bearings, I think. That's not ideal. So, and there's nothing, <laughs> it's just bearings that are doing that. So, I do definitely think I have to take that all apart, which is going to be exciting to get out. But first, you got to take this part off for the height gauge section, then probably take this off, and then yeah, lots of fun. I've seen other people do it online and they had lots of fun and explained how much fun it was. Fun with quotes, of course. But at this point, this is this top part should be much lighter without the motor and other little aluminum bits. Uh, mostly without the motor. So I should be able to take this off. I think I'm probably going to leave it on. Well, I'm not sure. It'll be easier, maybe, if this is off, to take this out or it may be easier if it's in place. I'll have to figure that out. But in any case, it's getting there and I already found, <laughs> with the wiring, I already found 100% a reason to take this apart and redo it because that was not going to be good. Well, I got it apart. It's now just a base and a pole which together probably weigh about 80 pounds. That thing Normally it's this collar and then this bearing with this side up. So that the bearing sits on the collar and then that allows this table to rotate. And that is a giant thick solid piece of cast iron. That was fun <laughs> to pick up from because I, when I had it, I had it down to here so I could get well, I'll cover that in a minute, but I had it down to there to get the quill out because I had to come down out. And then I had to lift that whole way up. <laughs> this is, well, when I'm standing here, this is above my eye level. Like, here is my eye level, and I'm six feet tall. So, I, because this is on a four-inch thing, I had to lift that uh, over 100 pounds up, over, and that was fun. This is where the spring goes. This is the tensioning piece that goes up in there that controls the spring tension. That is the little bolt that sticks through and catches... Uh, where is it? Somewhere on here. And that holds this top bearing assembly in the top. This is the piece that goes through for the handle that the post comes out that side. That is the piece, the collar that sits right under this top right here to hold it so that you could swivel the top back and forth without it dropping down. This is the piece that goes around that bottom collar that the gearing inside here which spins really nicely, attaches to, to move the table up and down. This, I can't really get apart yet. I have to go back in and look and see if online there's better instructions. One, I can't get the, the bottom chuck off, and then I can't get the inside bearings and stuff out. I'm not 100% sure, well, I know I should because I don't know if I'm suspecting all the bearings need replaced. Whenever I had the top off, there was a lot of noise. So yeah, these are, you can tell, because there's paint on this, these are definitely the original bearings. And they are 6205Z 
on both sides. Uh, NTN on the other side. That's not gonna. There we go. Even though it may not focus, that's 6205. One thing I learned you can't just go by the markings on the bearings, you have to actually measure them. And there's three measurements there's the inner diameter, the outer diameter, and the thickness. So I looked, these are the old bearings, and I looked online, these are 15, mil, 15 millimeters thick, I think it's 25 inner diameter and 52 outer diameter if I remember correctly. And so I got on Amazon, there was PGN bearing, and I got some of those, and I got them put back on. One thing I'm not 100% sure on is, you can see there's some grease on there outside that came out of the bearing and when I was tapping it on and I should have tried to use the vise to put it on completely I did get the vise on after it got started but I didn't do that for the first one I did it for most of the second one but live and learn I do I, I got a four pack of these so if these go bad I have another set I also was able to clean up some of these other things using a combination of drill, wire wheels, and such. And I still have to do this. That's the head piece. I still have to do the pipe. I did this. I, I painted that inside and out with primer. And I had a can of yellow that was mostly done. So I used the yellow on the bottom of the base. I still haven't done anything with the table yet. So. I still have to do whatever I'm going to do with the table, whatever I'm going to do with the head to clean it up and get that going. Probably use some of the evapor rust I got to deal with some of these little parts. I have to clean up the pipe. I have to finish redoing the motor. The wire that was bad on the switch side was also bad on the other side and that's a mess that was in there. So we'll see how that goes. And yeah, I still have to still have to redo the motor, but that'll be all right. I also I managed to paint the K, the top inside and out with primer, and the base of the top inside out with primer. The one thing I can't get is I cannot get this off. I this is a 1364 hole, and due to the way this works, you are supposed to spin this in that direction and that will force the chuck off and then I got it part way but it won't go further and then once you get that off you can get in here and release some of the pieces and unscrew bits I don't know if I can show that but it's not going to focus on that but anyway there's pieces to unscrew to clean that up and get that all sorted on the inside because again with the noise this might be okay if I just clean up the outside and put it back in but if I do all that the fact that this is a pain in the butt to take out might mean that it will be easier if I do all this if I can so that's the next step is to continue to try and get this off and then work on the pipe and the headpiece and the table and the motor it's getting there. Uh, the one thing I was interesting about it was there really wasn't a whole lot of pieces to it. I mean there were some but given the fact that it was a drill press and I took basically everything except for that center piece apart there really wasn't that many pieces so the good news is it should hopefully go back together fairly well. Gotta work on the rest.